And now I just want to look at a few more properties of the integral. In this one, if a is greater than b, so what does that mean? It means that their lower limit of integration is a larger number than the upper limit of integration. Well, it turns out then that that is equal to negative the integral where you switch the limits of integration. So the smaller number is below. Why is that? It's actually not so hard to see why this is the case. Remember that this integral is a limit of a sum. What is the sum? The sum are the function values at these sample points times delta x. What is delta x in this case? Delta x in this case would be b minus a over n. What is delta x for this one here? Delta x for that one would be a minus b over n. That's really the only difference between these two integrals when we work out their limit of a Riemann sum. It's just the delta x is different because it depends on which is the upper limit and the lower limit when you take their difference. And you can see that these things are negatives of each other. One is the negative of the other one. And so that explains then where this negative comes from. It comes from the fact that it, the delta x's are negative of each other. Okay, so that's where the negative sign is. So if your lower limits bigger than your upper limit, then you switch them and you just have to add an extra negative sign out front of the integral. What about in this next case? Well, if a is equal to b, if your limits of integration are exactly the same, then the integral is zero. One way to think about this is, well, the delta x in this case would be a minus a over n, which is zero. So if the delta x is zero, then the, value, the limit of your Riemann sum would be zero. Another way to think about this is, if you're integrating uh, your function from a to a, well, there is no width. There is no width to the region that you're trying to find the area of. So the area has to be zero. It's another way to think about it. Some more properties. If c is a constant, then the integral of a constant is just c times the length of the interval. It's not so bad to see why this is the case. If this was a and this was b, and here is your function, the constant function c, what does the integral represent? Well, it would be the area of this region, but that's just a rectangle. And so the area would be this height, which is c, times the width, which is b minus a. The integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals, or the integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. And the integral of a constant times a function is the constant times the integral. These should look very familiar. These are similar to rules of differentiation. Remember the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. The derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. The derivative of a constant times a function is a constant times a derivative. These are very similar properties to differentiation rules. And these are following directly from the definition of the definite integral and the summation properties given here. What about the last property? The integral from a to c of f plus the integral from z to b of f is equal to the integral from a to b of f. What does this mean? It means that suppose you had a function, maybe that does something like this, from a to b, and you make a stop at some point c. Then it says that if you integrate from a to c, and then you integrate from c to b, that's the same, th and add those two together, then that would be the same as just integrating from a all the way to b. And now notice that at no point does it say that c has to sit between a and b. So in fact, this property holds even when c is somewhere else other than between a and b. So if you integrate from a all the way up to c, and then from c to b, then that's the same as integrating from just a to b. So let's look at another example. Let's evaluate the integral from 0 to 3 of this function. We're going to use some properties to simplify this. First thing I can do is I can just write it as the difference of two integrals.
And now I can bring constants out front. So I'm using just some of the properties we talked to, we talked about in last last slide. So that's three times zero to the three square root of nine minus x squared dx. So now I just have to focus my attention on these integrals here. So let's look at the first one. That first integral, the integral from 0 to 3 of x, so there's my function going out to 3. That integral represents this area. The height would be 3. So the integral from 0 to 3 of x dx just represents the area of the triangle, which would then be 1 half base times height or in other words, 9 halves. What about this integral? Well, 9 minus x squared, that's an upper semicircle of radius 3. And then we're integrating from 0 to 3 of that function. So it's that region here. So the integral from 0 to 3, square root of 9 minus x squared dx, is equal to 1 quarter the area of the circle of radius 3. So this is 9 pi by 4. So this is sort of our side work here. And that means that back to our original line of reasoning, this integral is equal to 9 halves, so that's 9 halves, minus 3 times this integral is equal to 9 pi by 4. And so this becomes 9 minus 27 pi by 4, and so that's the value of the integral. Let's look at the next example. Evaluate this integral, so the integral of f from 0 to 3 of this piecewise defined function. Let's get an idea for what this thing looks like. Always a good idea to sketch piecewise defined functions to see what they look like. So from 0 to 1, and then we go from 1 to 3. So from 0 to 1, it's this linear function, 1 minus x. So at 0, the function value is 1. And at 1, the function value is 0. So it's a straight line that connects those two points. And then what's the next one? Well, this would be y is equal to negative square root of 1 minus x minus 2 all squared. Square root of 1 minus something squared, that to me it sort of looks like a circle's lurking in the background here. So what I'll do is I'll square both sides to see if I can uncover a circle. And there it is. x minus 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So that's a circle of radius 1 shifted over to x equals 2 and y equals 0. So it's shifted over to be centered at that point. And it's of radius 1, so now the question is, it's sort of a circle that's sitting like right here. And the original curve, though, is y minus the square root, so it's the lower semicircle. So I'll get rid of that upper piece. So that's our y is equal to negative square root of 1 minus x minus 2, all squared. And what is our integral? Our integral is from 0 to 3. So it's from 0 all the way up to 3. So it concerns these regions here. Now, remember our integrals are signed areas. So it's the area of the thing above minus the area of the thing below. What's the area of the thing above? The area is, well, that's out to 1 there, so that's 1 half base times height. This was a height of 1. So the area is a half. What's the area of the thing below? The area would be uh, 1 half the area of a circle of radius 1. So that's 1 half pi 1 squared, or in other words, pi by 2. And so in this case, the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx is equal to, well, it's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx plus the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx. Here we're using that previous property that said we can split up an integral 
into the sum of two integrals by splitting the interval up into two intervals. And the reason we've done this here is because we can deal with each of the individual intervals differently. The first interval, the integral represented the area of that triangle. So that had an integral of one half. On the second interval, the integral represents the negative area of that semicircle. So this was negative pi phi 2. And so our end result is that this is 1 half 1 minus pi. And you'll notice that the integral in this case is negative because pi is bigger than 1. So the integral is negative in this case and all that means is that there's more area below the axes. There's more area in the semicircle that's sitting below the axes than there is in the triangle sitting above the axes.